Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, friends, listeners, colleagues, and anybody who's probably or possibly listening in for the first time. This morning's episode, and uh, in the way things are going now, it's a long distance one, and we're speaking to a, an old friend and an old colleague who's in Luxembourg, and that particular colleague, very humble man, when I asked him how should I introduce him, he said to me, an old retired, I shall use the word gentleman, that isn't the word that he used, but it's Ram Menon, and everybody knows him in the industry. So Ram, great pleasure to have you on, and thank you so much for giving up your time. Thank you, Chris. I mean, it's uh, it's great catching up with you after all this time. Wow, it's uh, it's, it's been some time that we, we caught up. It is indeed, my friend. Now, when you retired, you were the Divisional Senior Vice President for Cargo with Emirates, and you had an illustrious and, I would say, industry-influencing career. So you must be very, very proud. I'm sure you are. And you'd also be looking back on some outstanding memories, achievements. And um, you're a man that can uh, tell us a lot about history. And now we're in a position where this damn virus is probably going to appear in history books for the next God knows how many decades as to what were you doing before COVID-19. So just very quickly, what, um, what were you actually doing? How did you get to where your position was? So just to give people who might not know as uh, as well as I do, your background. Oh, uh, well, Chris, I mean, uh, and, uh, I'm very happy to be a part of a generation which has gone from uh, abacus to automation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you, you, you probably, um, you know, um, feel the same, uh, but it, it's an exciting uh, period of time that we, we are all alive in. Uh, uh, you, you go from Abacus, you went to, to semi-automation. You know, when I was doing my engineering in college, I was not even allowed to use a, a calculator. You know, I had to use a slide rule. So that's the kind of you know, uh, evolution that we have actually seen, uh, which is absolutely amazing. Of course, my, my, my own uh, career started in uh, aviation, Gruev Airways and uh, British Airways. Uh, it's interesting that uh, now people are talking about seat packs, you know, uh, yeah, putting yeah. cargo on the seats. We used to do that in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> it's all coming back. Yeah. And um, of course, I, I did I spend a little bit of time in um, uh, freight forwarding industry. And then, of course, um, was it the right, uh, right place at the right time um, when they were just conceiving um, uh, the startup of Emirates. And like they say, Emirates is all history. Um, but I, I've been very, very fortunate in the sense that uh, I had a great team of people I mean, that uh, uh, came together to create that airline and uh, was very, very proud to lead uh, such a great uh, team of people. And in the deal, of course, I mean, also uh, industry-wise, I mean, it was quite exciting because uh, I also was um, uh, a part of the team that uh, set up TIACA, the International yeah, Aircraft yeah. Association. So yeah. I could contribute there and uh, also being able to contribute uh, to IATA. I did uh, four years in the uh, IATA Cargo Committee Chair uh, before I retired. Um, and I also uh, had um, uh, quite a bit of um, uh, time with uh, CILT, the Chartered Institute of uh, Logistics um, and Transportation, and I was the Vice President in Dubai. Um, and um, uh, so on. I mean, it's been um, and, uh, and all that in your and all that in your spare time, Ram, eh? I, absolutely. I mean, you know, this this is where I mean, I'm, uh, uh, a huge chunk of my time was actually spent, you know, in all these uh, activities. I mean, but they they were all interlinked. Yeah. So it was not just that, uh, uh, you know, it, it was one thing or the other, but it was all, you know, it was a package deal. Uh, and it was an 18-hour day, you know, two or three times a week on an airplane. I don't miss any of those things. <laughs> no, no, I, I understand. And, and many times when we were at conferences or when we bumped in, one of the, the, the topics was about how to make people appreciate or understand cargo better. And I think now with the virus and, and you know, there's so much press coverage with people on the front line, keeping the supply chain going, who the real heroes are. And, and obviously the care workers and the people that are, you know, suffering so badly, um, yeah, we should yeah. all respect and, and give them a, you know, really, really big round of applause every time we can, because they've been exceptional. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah. but, but within that group, um, obviously there's people that otherwise wouldn't even probably think that they were noticed. So the people who are keeping the warehousing going, 
yeah. unloading yeah, yeah. the aircraft, you know, all times of the day and night and making sure that the, you know, the trucks are loaded, that the truck drivers are able to distribute. So all those people who are keeping everything going that we all took for granted, they really, really are doing an exceptional job. And cargo is now coming to the fore a lot more, which I think is a good thing. I mean, you're absolutely spot on. Uh, but, but then again, if you look at it, we have had several uh, opportunities to, uh, for the, uh, to pass that message on. Just go back to, I mean, uh, just 20 years back, I mean, uh, SARS. Yep. It was uh, air cargo which was keeping uh, the world going. I mean, the airlines, I mean, uh, they, uh, the, especially the passenger airlines whose uh, passenger numbers had completely dwindled. You know, cargo was just going strong, and at the same time, they, cargo was the one that was supporting uh, basically the life as a whole. Yeah. Um, and, and this time around, uh, well, then we had H1N1, we had the swine flu, and uh, several other mares. Um, but uh, this time, I think the, the opportunity is a bigger one because everybody sees it because the world has come to uh, come down to its knees. Uh, we have to really be grateful and thankful uh, yep. to the doctors and the, the, the nurses and the, the people in the medical profession who are out there, you know, uh, in, in, in the front line. And uh, it, it, we, as uh, air cargo people, are also, we should be very happy to be able to play the support role. Yep, yep. But then again, I mean, we, we do play the support role, but there are several other unsung heroes. Uh, the, the people who are making door-to-door -door deliveries, the people, yep. cleaners in, in hospitals, you know, uh, people in the logistics business, uh, they, they really are the unsung heroes. I mean, who are supporting, uh, they're keeping the, the entire uh, medical profession propped up so that they can fight. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, exactly and right. and uh, at this stage, of course, I mean, any time, anything like this thing happens, uh, you need uh, to move everything very, very quickly. So air cargo comes in, uh, on its own. Uh, of course, in this case, this particular case, uh, biggest challenge for the air cargo was that we lost about 50 to 55% of the capacity that was deployed uh, in, in the passenger bellies. Yeah. So, um, and, and it, 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 I'm so happy to see that uh, a lot of the airlines have actually come back deploying their um, um, passenger airplanes and, and carrying cargo. We, we used to do that. Uh, we have done that several times in the past. I mean, we, we did that during the Gulf War. We did that, that during the SARS and several other um, epidemics. You know? Yeah, and um, now, it's, now it's being given the term praetors. <laughs> I hadn't heard that. No, that yeah. That's a good one. That's a praetors. good one. Praetors. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and um, uh, also the very fact that now it, it's got uh, even regulatory um, uh, authorities have actually come back recognizing the fact that sometimes you need to do that and giving the right kind of guidance yeah. to put cargo in the in the cabins uh, yeah. know, of the passenger airplane, which is great. And yeah, I just I just received I just received a a twenty six page guidance on safe transportation for cargo and passenger equipment. So it's like you said, people people are all rallying round, and this this collaboration now um, and doing things correctly, I think, is 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 one of the the upsides of what's happened. That's right. Now, now Ram, you've you've obviously seen some of the the, the news um, articles with you know carriers who are having to make people now redundant, you know, downsizing because of the way they think the next year or two years at least is going is going to be in the new normal. Now. Yeah. That's going to have a huge impact on so many people's lives. It's 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 a it's an incredible um, and, and it's going to be a very disturbing period of time that everybody's going to go through. So as far as as far as positives, because obviously there's going to be a lot of things that people are going to be distressed about. But as far as positives, what do you think are the are the major positives that are going to come from this new normal? Yeah, I just want to touch uh, one, one, one factor. I mean, uh, the, the fact that the aviation industry is probably going to be, the, uh, it's always a capital intensive industry. Yeah. And, uh, and cash is running out. So that's one of the reasons why, I mean, the airlines are going to get, uh, be slow to come back. The other factor for airlines, I mean, we, we still have a huge dependency on uh, uh, passenger bellies to provide yeah. it as capacity into places. Uh, which are not uh, high-density um, cargo routes. 
Um, so uh, those those that capacity can only come back come back internationally uh, once the international borders start opening. Exactly. And yeah. the, the biggest challenge there is, of course, I mean, uh, uh, I, I heard talks about countries saying, right, the foreigners coming in, they might have to go into quarantine. I mean, well, that is not going to work. Uh, social distancing within the airplane is not really going to work because, I mean, uh, the, the cost of travel is going to go, uh, you know, skyrocket. So yep. people will, will not travel. So it, it's a double-edged sword. Um, it, it's a dilemma that, uh, that the industry is in. But it will come back. But in a, maybe, I mean, they, they are going to be a kind of cautious uh, shrinkage of uh, capacity in the market. Uh, but, you know, a, a, anything like this, a kind of pandemic, although there are negatives, it also has a lot of positives. Yeah. Now, let me take you back. When did the e-commerce actually get a shot in the arm? That was during SARS. Yeah. SARS actually boosted the Amazons and the Alibabas. So every time there has been an epidemic, it's, it's something new comes up. Some part of the industry, those who are very forward-looking, that gets a boost and uh, uh, evolves. In this particular case, what I see um, happening, the opportunities which are happening, a, uh, first of all, working from home is going to be um, a new norm. Yeah. Um, it has benefits. Uh, be, uh, could this have happened about 20 years back? I don't think so, because technology today allows you to do that. Yeah. So uh, in the working from home, um, that will benefit companies where they can take a, a review of the real estate that they deploy. Yeah, and they, they can reduce that so they can become cost effective there. IT platforms which can facilitate um, uh, a remote communication, and I'm pretty sure the cloud is going to uh, play a big role in uh, uh, accessing information at any given time. At the same time, securing um, uh, the company's uh, data uh, and, and transporting it safely. Uh, that is going to um, uh, be a big uh, thing. It will also have a, a positive environmental e uh, effect. The other thing is, I mean, you know, uh, uh, people, uh, real estate uh, might start uh, get a boost purely because if you're going to start working from home, then you probably want to have an additional room um, where you can isolate yourself from uh, your little babies and kids, you know, <laughs> so they don't interfere. So they might actually upgrade. Uh, people might uh, start upgrading their um, uh, home accommodations. So that's one thing. There'll be a lot of estate. Agents, there'll be a lot of estate agents out there saying, you know, please God, please God, he's going to be right. Yeah, I, I think this is going to happen. I mean, you know, um, it might not have happened overnight, but over the next uh, three to four years, people. Will, it, it, it takes time for people to start yeah, considering, yeah. and also the fact that uh, right now, a lot of people, their cash savings are getting depleted. So you need to build that reserve in. Banks will play a major role in this. Uh, if, if they have become very restrictive in um, giving mortgages and stuff like that, 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 that could, be a, a, could be a hurdle. Yep. Um, and what, uh, you said there, what you said there, Ram, about the working from home, and you said about 20 years ago, even, recently most management they wouldn't actually uh, a tough word to, to use but they wouldn't actually trust the workers to be as productive and as to be as as capable they were. but now with technology there's ways of there's ways of monitoring there's ways of motivating and one of the biggest motivation factors is the um the reduction in in commute times and extra costs with cars with fuel and and a huge benefit is the amount of additional hours they get per week either to do what they want to do or to be with their families and loved ones. And I think this is something now that's changed people's values. Well, absolutely. You're, you're, you're spot on in, in the sense that they, they, the research is showing that people are actually more productive working from home than the eight to five job. Because when, from working from home, you have the whole 24 uh, hours where you distribute stuff. Yeah. Of course, I mean, no, they're, they're, you know, some companies, I mean, no, might be very open about it. 
the other companies might, uh, could be very stringent. They probably would monitor I mean, your uh, actual um, uh, work hours between the working times. Uh, today, anything is possible. I mean, you can, with the geofencing I mean, technology, you can even track the movement of your workers. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, working from home. So the, the, all those technology, uh, the, the, the technology is there today. It's how sensibly that uh, people would actually use it to make that uh, working from home is efficient without uh, encroaching on people's pr uh, privacy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they give them the freedom. Yeah. Um, so I, then I know, you, you, are, uh, uh, you know, your, your uh, performance level might be start getting monitored with uh, the task, uh, being task oriented. Yeah, yeah. And, and another area that's going to be, I think, relatively new is um, when everybody comes back to what they consider to be the new normal, there's going to be such high levels of anxiety and fear. And we spoke earlier about whether or not there'll be a second coming and a third coming and until the vaccines or the therapeutics or the diagnostics actually start making an effect. Um, so that, that anxiety and fear level is now uh, it, it's further exacerbated because of the recent news with the unemployment, with the numbers being laid off. So I think um, almost like a duty of care from the industry to those people, everybody needs to come together to support those people during that, that layoff period because, please God, they'll all be employed again as soon as possible. But we need to use the technology and, and things that we're learning to help them to learn new skills or to endorse existing skills or to renew licenses or to keep them involved so that they don't feel isolated when they do end up being in a period of unemployment. You know, you, you have to take the unemployment numbers with a pinch of salt at this stage, uh, purely because a lot of people have actually made, especially in places where there is a social system, um, they they make the people redundant so they can go on dole, uh, and uh, as soon as the company you know the, the business uh, starts coming back, a lot of these guys will get, get reemployed. So there will be uh, some percentage of that who would actually uh, um, uh, get the, remain unemployed. That's because the companies are shrinking. Uh, but in large, uh, I think uh, the you know huge numbers will be back very very quickly. Yeah, so I'm but, very confident well, about that. Yeah, let's hope so. And and the logic the logic makes sense, Ram. What I, what I'm getting at is um, is companies that do lay people off. Um, I think they the, the, let's say the new normal of 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 ethics or or morals or whatever or caring would be that you know it would be nice to keep in touch with those people and as part of that layoff yeah. you offer them the chance that they can still come online free to get certain training courses to keep their skills base up to keep their interest levels up so they don't get further anxiety when they're under pressure because they're not working from a more, more from a social and a society acceptance perspective rather than financial oh and yes i, I mean they, you know we, we we have to be there for everybody yeah, and as the uh, uh, businesses start opening, I mean, it's up to us because we create the demand. We can, we are the consumers, and we, yep. we and unless we create that uh, uh, demand, you know, the, the the businesses cannot survive, thrive. Yep. So yeah. it, it, it it it's all interlinked. It's all intertwined. The other area I think um, uh, we we are going to see um, uh, in, in the social behavior. Uh, that will boost certain other last mile delivery um, uh, uh, business will be uh, dining, um, uh, the dining side, online, yeah. um, online uh, dining. Uh, the other one is uh, supermarkets. Yes, yeah. people have now gotten used to getting the stuff delivered, buying online from supermarkets. I think these two uh, areas, alongside the uh, e-commerce, they will get a real, real good boost. I mean, look, look, look at today, the uh, uh, Amazons, the Lasadas, the Alibabas. I mean, all those uh, guys are just booming. I mean, they are actually employing people rather than uh, letting people go. So it shows the change in the consumer behavior. Yeah, yeah, is evolving. Yeah, it's an incredible, and and it's what it's done is it's it's given it a super boost 
Um, yeah. and, and also, same thing, we were talking about technology, and you used a, a lovely term there from abacus to automation. Um, yeah. That uh, the old way, all our yesterdays, there was an awful lot of waste and inefficiency and delay and bureaucracy and admin. And I think this is now going to speed an awful lot of, if it makes sense, we do it, we do it quickly. But something you know, that's also going to have to come in is more of a focus on margin matters. Yeah. It, and, it, uh, especially it also, in our industry, yeah. it margins also, are so it, important. Sorry. Uh, it also gives, I mean, talking of margins, uh, this gives a tremendous opportunity to actually bring down your unit cost. Yep. Uh, contributions. I mean, if you're working uh, from home, you only have, you, you don't need the kind of real estate that you need to uh, accommodate uh, people, or else you can look at it the, the other way. You can expand your business, but with the same uh, amount of real estate. Then go back into. Let, let me bring you uh, uh, go into the schooling aspect yep. of it. Yep. Now, worldwide, there's always a shortage of classrooms, uh, schooling. Um, so now, suddenly, I mean, what they can do is you can, they can have 50% of the people in, in school, 50% working from home, and the rest of the 50%, they can actually double up. And if you just do the 50% online, 50% uh, offline, you can actually double the uh, throughput through the school. Yep, yep, and yep, just yep. imagine what that's going to do to the school's bottom line. I mean, yep. bringing down the unit cost. Yep, and also also helping with one of the things that's going to be a huge fallout from this is some of the developing countries. They're going to struggle to to a battle against this because of resource facilities, etc. But again, education is one of the best cures for every. Um, so every problem that, that this world has ever experienced. So the more people we can educate, the better. So, you know, these plug-in ports and where people can be put together with less travel and get the benefits of good teachers, there's going to be so much modification now with the, um, with the technology that's available. So that's a big positive. Yeah, I mean, I, I call this, I mean, every time you go through an event like this, and I call it the acceleration of evolution. Yeah. That's what we are seeing. Now we are going to see tremendous amount of changes. I mean, uh, you know, people, uh, uh, for example, in our business, I mean, uh, the old business, we, we've been very, very bad with technology, um, or rather keeping pace with technology. Yeah. And here, I mean, they, they're, going to, uh, they're going to be forced to change. And you know, it's interesting to see uh, uh, something which was very close to my heart for the last two, two decades. Um, where I mean, I always said, you know, we cargo had, uh, got uh, air cargo got commoditized back in the 80s when uh, the deregulation set in. Yeah, the first time that we had the FAK rates, as we called it, uh, the fa uh, freight all kinds, yeah. that was the time that cargo actually became uh, a commodity. Yeah. You know, and uh, and uh, you know, something that was very close to my heart was, uh, why don't we put cargo up into the futures market? And um, I'm so glad the uh, people like the, the you know the um, uh, the air cargo in, in index, um, uh, the FIS who have joined them now they are jo joining uh, the Baltic Air Cargo Exchange because that becomes uh, now can become a standard of contracting. Yep, yep. An yep. index-based contracting. Uh, airlines don't have um, a much of an issue with that, but the freight forwarders and the shippers do. Yeah. And uh, freight forwarders are stuck in the middle. They, you know, you have to keep paying uh, uh, the airlines on time, but they don't get paid uh, on, on time. But at the same time, the rates of airlines can uh, go up and down, but they have to have fixed contracts. It allows them to say, right, you know, this is the index, and we, we, we contract based on the index. If the air cargo rates go up, uh, they automatically get compensated for that. I understand where you're coming from. Yes. I understand where you're coming from. And being around all parts of the sector, I wouldn't say... I wouldn't say who is the tail or who is the dog or yeah. who has the benefits, but I do think that the entire 
the entire supply chain is going to have to um, remodel itself, reshape itself, yeah. and be a lot more prepared to collectively grow the cake Absolutely instead of fighting right. over the pieces too soon. Absolutely right. Uh, so the, these are the changes. I mean, I think it, it, it are being which are being forced. Yeah, yeah. Onto yeah. the air cargo industry. Yeah. Of course, the air cargo industry. What they need to watch out. Uh, and uh, I, I, my view is over the next. 10 years, 11 years, air cargo will continue to grow. Um, I, I see uh, ocean uh, industry taking a, a bit of a beating. Yeah. Uh, because you know they, they have invested in these huge mega ships, um, yeah. which, um, uh, you know, and uh, when, when you come into this kind of situation where large volumes are suddenly disappearing. Yeah. Smaller volumes are moving uh, quicker, and there's another technology that's really, really uh, coming uh, into being is um, uh, the 3D printing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you yeah. remember back See, in the nose with the new visors for the medical. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Chris, I mean, you, you'll remember this. Remember 70s and 80s, and even uh, early 90s. Uh, and then rely on the nice high density traffic commodity rates on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, for example, uh, the, the Financial uh, Times, uh, ma uh, you know, printed uh, in uh, uh, London was then sent across to all over the world, right? So well, what happened? Some people got it the, the same day, some people got it the next day, some people got it come 90s. Yeah. with the development of uh, internet and the media coming up, suddenly it was still, still being but printed remotely yep. all over the places. So people got their newspapers early in the morning, everywhere. Yeah. But what it also did was it allowed uh, the Financial Times to customize a couple of pages with the local news. That's right. So suddenly, I mean, where you were just a UK-based uh, international thing, you have suddenly gone global, but local. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Globali globally local localized. Yeah. And the same thing is now going to start happening with the 3D printing, where the design and research and design is going to be centralized, but it can be printed then in various uh, remote places. So what is that going to do to our business? The other thing that's going to happen is, for example, you take your watch, you know, I mean, you 3D print your chain. In a watch, I mean, the chain has got several links and they all have their own supply chains, right? Now, when you do a 3D printing, it's one piece that's printed. So what happens to all the, you know, the, 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 the links that was going into the assembly line somewhere to be, to be um, you know, completed. And that is a huge amount of volume of transportation that's going to just start disappearing. So we need to yeah. start thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. And you, you're talking about nearshoring, uh, um, uh, offshoring, reshoring, whatever you call them. Yes, this uh, has also exposed the, the dependency that the world has on China. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the countries now, I mean, uh, you, you know, um, we've been seeing that uh, countries are now uh, uh, creating funds that is going to be deployed for people to move their uh, uh, manufacturing from China to their own countries. Yeah, or, or, at least, or at least a guaranteed percentage. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. whatever it is, I mean, it, it's fine. I mean, it th things like... Um, uh, the uh, you know the PPEs, the masks, etc. Yep. These are very very essential. I think they will uh, there will be a, a boost for that to come back to and uh, produce insure in various places. But things like you know um, uh, the components that go for production that's still coming from some centralized places. If you look at the uh, um, rare earths, I mean, China controls majority of the rare earths in the world. Yep. And that's a very critical uh, element of what's needed in electronic business. So, uh, you know, so the world has got to find a balance in how you're going to create that. Even ensuring of all the stuff 
for the time being, with the heat of the moment, it might happen, start happening, but don't forget, globalization cannot be reversed. The markets are global, and uh, the global competitive, competitiveness will remain. Uh, so uh, the cost of the actual end product will drive where it's going to be produced. It might not be China, it might be somewhere else. So people are going to constantly look for um, uh, you know, uh, uh, more economic places where it can be uh, manufactured, uh, uh, pro produced or uh, procured, whatever it is. For the time being, yes, there, there will be quite a bit of confusion. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm going to see. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree, I agree, I agree with you, Ram. And, and that, that confusion, that confusion will also have a, have a period of change. And, um, the, you know, the fact that people are, as we said, onshoring, one of the things that I think is going to, is going to come from this, when people are looking at values or, or cultures of a company, yeah. as you know, in the past, and all of us were, were um, victims of it, you have your budgets, your targets, you have your stretch budgets, you have your shareholder input, etc. And it all is all about bottom line, bottom line. And so many companies and now countries and political parties, they've realized that they weren't stocking correctly. You've mentioned PPE. They weren't yeah. paying attention to effective risk. And then you can be caught at both ends of the spectrum, whether it's worst case scenario or best case scenario. So if you either have to contract or if you have to rapidly ramp up because of opportunities, people didn't have the, they don't have the agility or the resilience and the continuity element of that risk platform has not, I don't, I don't think it's ever been as well respected as it is now. And the worst person to tap you on the shoulder is Mr. Hindsight. And he's yeah. popping up. He's popping up everywhere now saying, you should have, why didn't you? Please explain. So there's a lot of blaming and a lot of soul searching going on. And I think that's also going to change now the old the concepts that we, we, um, we work through, the just-in-time and the managing your stock effectively, etc. Things now have to be sustainable. And I think shareholders and valuations of companies will be not happy, but they'll be willing to reduce a certain level or, or dividends or whatever for the understanding and the peace of mind that the company that they're involved in has got a good level of continuity and sustainability because of a, of a, of a retrenching now over to those core elements that were never really taken seriously because they were never seen as revenue generators. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, you, you talked about just in time. I mean, you, know, you remember the nineties when the just in time was a buzzword and the, uh, and then we were seeing in certain quarters the disruptions. So people started uh, keeping just in case the JIC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But nobody ever, ever, ever thought a pandemic like this would bring an entire world into. Uh, it's just, so even if you, you know, if you go back to your hindsight, you would never have expected uh, um, uh, such a just in case um, inventory holding as we we need it now. So, uh, well, I think more, more than that, uh, what's uh, affecting it is because um, we, were, we had dependency on one region for production. But then again, I mean, what people don't realize it, I mean, you know, people are very critical about the way that China has handled it, but people also don't realize if China hasn't done, uh, hadn't done what it did, you know, and got their production back, in, uh, back online, we would all be struggling. Yeah. So yeah, we had uh, we have a lot to thank, be thankful for, and they need to also ask themselves if that happens in their own country or in their own region, could they do what China did and manage to get their own production back uh, as quickly as uh, what they did to support the the front line? So there are several factors which actually go into uh, any kind of decision that you're uh, looking at. Oh yeah, huge. Yeah, but on the flip, on the flip side, if you look at it from a risk and a continuity perspective, then somebody would be able to sit at the top of the table and say, "That's very true." But then, why did we allow ourselves to be so reliant on that one particular source? So, too many eggs in one basket is yeah. is, is something that people are going to have to look at. Now, I think there's going to be um, there's going to be a, a, another sort of a, a, a wave or a peak which is everybody is going to be worried now until a vaccine is there and then everybody gets confidence that they can do what they want and mix again. 
yeah um, and history unfortunately does has, have a it does has a, um, uh, a way of repeating itself but the fact that people are now going to be focusing on continuity resilience etc and then yeah. is it going to go back to the buck and the dollar and you know how much can we save etc because obviously the economy is going to be so battered and bruised um, there needs to be a fine balance there at boardrooms, you know, to say, look, yes, but we've got to start promoting, looking after whether it's onshoring, nearshoring, et cetera, to a degree. So I think some of the standards and the values or quotas will start to change. And the, the H in the QHSS and E, I think there's going to be an awful lot of new hygiene standards that are going to become yeah. you know, regulatory and compliant and, and they're going to be a, not an option, but you must do. That's right, yeah. I, I'm not that pessimistic uh, about the economy and provided that uh, we start getting back uh, on our feet within the next couple of months, um, uh, purely because uh, th th there will be pain. Uh, I'm not discounting that. Yeah. But uh, the very fact that a lot of the governments are actually going to support their businesses you know, airlines, for example, when uh, I just see that Lufthansa has got a $10 billion uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, euro yeah. uh, package, uh, Air France has got about seven and a half million, uh, billion uh, euro uh, package from uh, France. So there are, there are people propping up and the, a, 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 aviation will gradually come back uh, because uh, the, the, In a problem, different uh, of course, the problem, of course, is uh, the airlines are running out of cash because they, they always have a liquidity uh, there but that is not getting depleted. So uh, the people who actually might get hurt a little bit more are going to be the airplane manufacturers because a lot of the new orders are going to be canceled or, I mean, they, yep. they'll be happier, they should be happier if it gets postponed, delivery gets postponed uh, backwards because a, a, lot, a lot of the cash has just disappeared. Yep. Um, the cancellation of orders, of course, is going to create major, major, uh, problem in the short uh, in the short to medium term but longer yeah. term it'll come back it will come back um, uh, because like anything else i mean you know uh, you, you remember uh, you remember i mean uh, in 80s and 90s whenever we went to anywhere we had to carry our ye little yellow card which said when uh, we had the yellow fever uh, in, 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 yeah, yeah. The, yeah, well, it's going to come back. I mean, you know, in the countries, if you're going to go in, uh, into any country, if they were, they're going to let you in, they want to know that you have you, you have been vaccinated against uh, yeah. uh, the COVID-19. So those things are going to come back and, well, they, they, they're, you know, the market will find its level. Yeah. And yeah. it will come back. It has always come back. Uh, how quickly it's going to come back is up to us. Yeah. Uh, up to us in the sense, are we going to be, uh, you know, lost in doom and gloom and just, uh, or, I mean, look at the new opportunities and move forward. Yep. The governments are, yes, I mean, they, they, uh, they for the time being, their own uh, infrastructure in, uh, uh, investments can uh, take a backseat a little bit because they have been fronting this uh, liquidity to, uh, the, to prop up the economy in itself. Um, so it, it's, it, but, but overall, I think in the next five to seven years, I think, you know, this will become a distant memory. Well, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, who knows? And, and please God, please God, it'll be, it'll be a distant memory. It'll be a painful distant memory because of the, obviously the losses to so many people and, and a big, big learning experience. And like you said, you know, it's, um, it's part of evolution, you know, sometimes things speed up, sometimes take a little bit of time to, you know, to run into, but whatever happens, you know, the lessons have to be learned from this because in all the funding and the investment in, in military goods and all these things, never has the world shared the same pain in this way. Yeah. It's incredible. You know, uh, the fact still remains that the memories are short. You remember the, the pain that we actually went through in 2008, 2009, 2010? Remember it well, Ram. That's why I'm yeah. still working. Just look at 2018, 2019, when, when the markets were strong. Did we ever remember about that? that it was a distant memory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So even this, people will, you know, people move on. 
you know, they, they, they don't live in the past, they go into, into the future. Uh, the future is going to be very different in the sense that this is going to change uh, not only the supply chain uh, uh, sourcing and stuff like that, it's going to change our social cultural behavior. Yep, yep, this yep, as human beings. The biggest thing, huh? in, and in, in fact, uh, saying, that, saying that, Ram, and I'm, I think you're the, you're the same as me over the years. I've, you know, I've had lots of things from USB sticks to pens to fancy, you know, electric hubs or everything else. This well, morning, just... I received from Germany from a colleague who's got his own his own company, Aero Concepts. He yeah. sent me one of these for me and for my wife. <laughs> Brilliant! So it's the first time I've ever first time I've ever received such a gift and um, i thought it was quite you know it's quite good and it actually came in handy because my my wife was going around to deliver some food to her mother today so she's now got a new mask to wear so it's amazing yeah. how things are changing you know people are not taking advantage of the, the the biggest opportunity that they have is you could have a mask that's advertising space which is you, you, you would probably sell that, that advertising space. <laughs> That's what James Wyatt has done now. He's put this on <laughs> and he's done a good job. Yeah, it's very clever. Uh, it'd be great yeah. to have it so and so. <laughs> exactly. No, thing, things are changing. And, and uh, I mean, you look, you look now, you know, some of the clips from the States with everybody wearing the masks. And now there's a debate whether we should be wearing masks everywhere, etc. So all these changes, one thing that I think is, is so important is when things do start coming out of lockdown, yeah. whatever happens, governments, airports, they all have to start doing the same things in the same way. So it makes it easy for the infrastructure to get back up again. And I always used to go mad when I'd, I'd go to one airport and you have to take your laptops out. Another airport, you've got to take your shoes off. And I'd be thinking to myself, why are there so many differences? And whether it's to do with screening equipment or policies, et cetera, it's going to be so important now that governments and regulators all come together and do the same thing for the same reasons in the same way. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, when you look at um, uh, our own industry, uh, some, uh, a gripe that I've always had, especially uh, being a passenger cargo airline, that uh, you know, since we, we, the air, the I'm, I'm talking about the cargo industry as a whole. Yeah, uh, we are still um, working with uh, regulations uh, from uh, 1892, and I'm talking about that loading of ULDs. Now, yeah. shipping containers are fine. You know, they 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 are rectangular boxes, uh, but when you have these Euro skits on um, a lower deli, uh, lo lower deck yep. um, belly container. Unless you have smalls, you don't, you cannot fully utilize. Suddenly you're putting a, um, a skits on a, um, a airline uh, a belly ULD, you're losing about 30 to 40% in space loss factor. Okay, now what, what I have been saying to the guys, I said, look, if you both load uh, the cargo into um, uh, into the containers. You have better utilization um, for both. I mean, you benefit from uh, uh, you know more cargo uh, getting into the container. Airline benefits that it, it also carries more cargo, and at the destination we can always skid it because skids are required for storage, yep. not for transportation. If you can just go away from uh, the, a concept where you know you, you need to have it on skate right from uh, a point A to the point uh, B. Yeah. Uh, you also save on skates, and you uh, you have uh, skates at the uh, destination. Skate it at the destination. You use the plastic skates. It's reusable. So you, th there's so much of cost saving, and I'm hoping that having to load passenger airplanes, bulk loading in the ma main cabin would at least get them to start thinking, look, we can do that. We can actually benefit from that. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. we'll start looking at it. Yeah, so yeah. You, you, know, you, you know, on a 777 a passenger belly, you can go up to about 60 tons of cargo. Okay? But 
you skip the, those things, you're lucky if you get about 25, 30 tons. Yeah, yeah no, no. The one thing, the one thing with human beings, Ram, as, as we know very, very well, is people, people are good when things are okay. Yeah. And people can be great when they're challenged. And right. such a challenge that we've got now, you've seen how quickly engineers are turning their hands to different products and being creative and innovative. You've seen what, what scientists and, and medical experts are able to do with vaccines that would normally take three, four years or more. And now they're doing it in the same amount of months. So the, uh, you know, the, the, the flexibility while still being in control over some of the governance criteria is also something that needs to ease up as well because you know, we need to move forward. Because but, those gov governance were I mean, created when we were still thinking uh, post the event, uh, analyzing things. But right now, everything is happening in real time. Yep. But the regulations yep. don't actually allow you to do that. And I'm hoping that uh, a pandemic like this would force that change. Yep. No, 100%. And, and just to end, just to end, you've worked with so many people, as I have, and, and uh, you know, we've been all around the world. And you see people in different countries, but they're still the same. They've still got the same values. They seem got, you know, there's the same, the same worries and concerns. I genuinely, genuinely think now, you know, people have got to be aware that there will be a high level of anxiety and fear coming into all the good things and the innovations. And we need to be encouraging people all the time to overcome those anxieties and fears as we move forward. So, you know, we all have to care an awful lot more than we probably did in the past. And we've got to make sure that we look after the people who are going to take the business into the future. Yeah, a couple of things. I mean, you know, um, and I uh, have... Uh -huh always preached uh, this that paranoia of security paranoia uh, paranoia of fear should not stop you from going forward yep okay at the same time uh, don't let the past dictate what you're doing today exactly anything that's happened in the past has happened there's nothing that you can do to change Yep. Hindsight is always 2020, as you said, Mr. Hindsight is all around uh, a lot here, but there's nothing you can do about it. But there yep. are things that you can do in the future. So what you need to do is you need to manage today with what can happen tomorrow. And, uh, but your uh, visions of grandeur is, are great, but today is reality. And if you don't survive today, you're not there tomorrow. So you need to live in the moment at the moment and do what can be uh, uh, do stuff the way that it can be for the future exactly ram care about really today important. yep yeah. care about today and always believe that tomorrow will be better yeah yeah because uh, yeah. tomorrow is uh, you know uh, tomorrow is where you want to be yeah 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 no that's very true ram listen we're coming to the end of the podcast so i'd like to say it's always a pleasure seeing you firstly anyhow and um, always, always great to hear what you're saying. It's lovely to see that you still care and you still got your passion and your that burning engine. And um, I look forward to seeing you somewhere under much, much better conditions very, very soon. Yes, indeed, Chris. I think I mean I'm looking forward to sharing a few adult beverages with you. Yes, as yes, we have yes. done in the past. It's yes. been a long time we haven't done that, and with other friends of ours, you know whom we haven't. But just as a footnote, I mean, I, I want to say something. This last one month yep. probably has been a lot more social for me, uh, like never before, purely because the whole concept of virtual socializing with the likes of Zoom and Skype and stuff has just created a whole new uh, culture. Yeah, and uh, it's absolutely amazing. When I'm, when I'm here, I mean, I hardly interact with people who are there in uh, um, uh, Kuala Lumpur, for example, or somewhere else, um, because uh, okay, even if you do, you communicate on WhatsApp or you know, email stuff like that. But now you are actually uh, inter uh, interacting with them, with people in front of you. Yeah, yeah. And that's a whole new new concept. So it's not all that bad. The earth is right now, we are on a reboot and reset. Yep, yep. And it's funny you say that, Ram. You said about Zoom. I remember the first time somebody said to me, do you know Zoom? 
And I said, yeah, 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 of course I do. It was a song that was sung by Fat Larry's band in 1983. <laughs> <laughs> now Zoom is a totally different, different concept than Fat Paul. And if, if we are here now, with the platforms coming up with, for the WFH, the working from home, yeah. Yeah. just imagine what it's going to be like in about two years' time. The yeah. tools that we're going to have uh, at our disposal. It's, I, It'll be, I'm, yeah. I'm, actually, I'm actually looking forward to that future. Yeah. In fact, I might be able to put my hand through the screen and take one of those books you've got from your, uh, your little your panel there behind you. Who knows? <laughs> It might happen. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Ram, take care of yourself, my friend. Lovely to, lovely to see you. Lovely to hear you. And thank you very, very much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Uh, you too, Chris. And thanks for this opportunity to uh, catch up. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thank you, Great. sir. Yeah.